22nd, if I'm not mistaken, of January in the year of our Most High Elohim 2020. The time now is approximately three minutes past 9 a.m. in the blessed land of Biafra. As it is customary with us here, I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to some of you because I recognize that right across the surface of this very planet Earth, people are listening to us this very morning, even those of you from California in USA. I dread to think what time it is up there right now, but all of you are awake and you're listening to us. And I say welcome to each and every one of you. As always, we preach the gospel of redemption, the gospel of hope, we lecture, we educate, and we tutor on this very noble platform. And this morning is not going to be an exception to that very rule. I do know that some of our relay stations are having issues with retuning because there's quite a lot of them. But I do hope that some of you are listening via IPOB Community Radio. We are on satellite. We are also simulcasting this live on Facebook. If you are suppressed and you cannot join us, please go to Radio Biafra app as well. There you can also participate and listen to us. It's going to be an interactive session this very morning because we, rec we recognize that some people have very pertinent and urgent questions to ask. And this morning we shall endeavor to field as many questions as possible. But you can only ask questions via Twitter. I think the link is on this very page, beneath this very page. If you go to Twitter and you ask us any question, very shortly I'll be joined by my principal secretary, Uchen Naukurafo, and then she'll read out the questions and we should be able to answer them. But first of all, as it is customary and tradition with us, we must endeavor to pray. And we are going to pray in the language of heaven, the very oldest language on the face of this very earth. Chipo kikabi ama purumi njani ne chine ken no nyenden sone efe wena wisi ala nyonyani na goze hanso ya mbeni ne. Onyanyi na jama wene to anyewo ichoze wezu gage. Anyana ge farosi, obo nane ge, bo nye kari njani ne kare ke mano mago nye kare ya. Obi ame nendi bo juwe ne tuge bige bi. Then so na boche zego kri kri hana wisi ala nyege obla dindo kenyoru abo na no bonde na tum pole dona na hani ne sene den so chine ke na kigwe no toto a ehi abale no wani ne bebu moge basa sroko pa kan na ke bre den gozi kanye na boka ta heze bu boni meli gwe we na ajo ge mama ge ne bre ga mara ge no mi ko ge bende ge no ani we na ajo kiri ge we chane ba nyo no ani we na ajo ge heze bu bende gozi ki we tinyo baka na titi ndi no kahara bunde kuni ka we megida nyo nyo gom na chine ke na den so ka kan sindi de tu a we ba ho no ise obede ko nsi bu zu we laya ni yi ani we na ajo ge o nye na de gide ma ro mbe bi ge bi be conuki where make a Biafra way, be also son and cabra no more attacker now. And we're not looking where Nanny is it, and I mean, him make out and one and one need in the two organiru. A Honanian cape rich on your own machinekin. Key waiting you more, is him one case, you come away, Ganyaka, John Henny Mandwan and Cabre and Gossi. Goga would be better than a Biafra guy than a Gajama way to you, where Gossia Hansel be sell and Yagi, Bulia Hansel Elu, Stanley Big Marone be kind of dog, he say, he say, he say. This very morning, all of you, I believe that those who are watching know who we are and why we do what we do. My name is Nnam Dekano. I am the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra all over this very planet Earth, the director of radio Biafra and Biafra television, and by the very special grace of the Most High Elohim, Chiku Kikabi Amapurumi a servant of the wonderful people of Biafra. We are live and we are direct this very morning, afternoon or night, depending on where you are. And we start this very day by making it abundantly clear that the greatest enemy of a black man is the way that we reason. If not that the way we reason is very, very abhorrent, there is no need or reason why we should be suffering and complaining every blessed day without the courage to do something about it. 
Some of you tried to do something about it with the end SARS protest, but some of us quickly, or should I say some of you quickly capitulated because of your tribal affiliations or religious considerations. They managed to divide each and every one of you. But today you must make up your mind what you want to do. Do you want to change your lives or do you want to continue residing in a damnable zoological republic with no hope, way or means out of the mess that you're in? Why can't we change our lives? Those who are telling you that a revolution is not the best way to go about it, ask them, how come Russia is advanced today? How come the United Kingdom, Britain is advanced today? How come Germany is advanced today? How come France is advanced? How come Spain is advanced? How come the United States of America, of course, the greatest country on this very earth, is where they are today? Is because in each and every of these countries, there was a revolution. Either a violent overthrow of a very corrupt and inept regime, or there was, there was what I would refer to as intellectual revolution. In Africa, none of these appears to be present at the moment. Those of them that commenced the NSAS protest tried as much as they can, but the forces that be overwhelmed them, the forces of darkness, the forces of hate, the forces of retrogression, the forces of iniquity prevailed, especially with the help of their journalists and their media houses. But this time around, we must prepare ourselves but before we do so, we must ask this very important question. Are we all prepared for this very change that is about to come? Are we mentally tough enough to withstand all the garbage that will be thrown at us? Are you strong enough to jettison every emotional consideration that has to do with tribe, ethnicity, or religion? Once we are able to overcome all of this nonsense, believe you me, this very next phase of revolution will stand and stand very, very strongly. Everybody knows that Nigeria is a scam, a very big one at that. Nigeria is being run by an extremist bunch of dictators called the presidency. All of you know this. Everybody understands this very fact that Buhari is no more. You know that Buhari is dead. Everybody knows. But those still perpetuating this very myth that Buhari is alive are those spinning their hopes on 2023. So this is a collection of odd bedfellows. These are people who are determined by every means available to cling on to power, to continue to impoverish you, to continue to allow terrorists from all across the Sahel to occupy your farmlands and your forests. They rape your mothers, they abduct your sisters, they kill your traditional rulers, they kill the daughters of your prominent men, and you do nothing about it. Because their only consideration is to keep you focused on this very elusive, better Nigeria to come. You and I know that Nigeria can never, ever be better. We know that very well. The whole world understands that Nigeria can never, ever be better. Why are you pinning your hopes on it? You're pinning your hopes on it so you can go to Dubai like Atiku and the rest of them and buy houses for your wives and your concubines. You are doing so because you think it's the turn of your village to eat money. And I have consistently asked this question Biden that has just been confirmed as the U.S. president. Is he from your village? Boris Johnson from the United Kingdom, is he from your village? Is Angela Merkel from your ethnic group, I'm asking you, in the zoo? But you prefer to live in all these countries, which means that ethnicity is irrelevant. What matters is the policies being pursued by any specific or particular government or regime. Not where they come from. When people tell you nonsense about it is our turn, why don't we wait till 2023, they are only deceiving you. And if you allow yourselves to be deceived, things can only get worse. Fulani terrorists will take over your land. 
time and time again i have warned you on this very matter but some of you never ever listened i told our yoruba friends that this thing you're supporting this very evil government you're supporting when they tagged ipob a terrorist group you supported them you are going to pay a very heavy price for it had the Yoruba journalist stood up and said, IPOB did nothing wrong, you cannot tag them a terrorist group, believe you me, by today, you will not have Fulani people occupying Yoruba forests and farmlands. Because in this life, what goes around comes around. If you support evil today because you're benefiting, eventually that evil will overwhelm you. The same thing happened to APC, the same thing happened to Fulani Caliphate. They brought in terrorists from all across the Sahel. They brought them into Nigeria to try to force Jonathan out of office. Now Jonathan is out of office. They are now, of course, reaping what they sold, all of them. Do you see that the North is in as much disarray as we have in the South? if not worse. When they were grooming and breeding these terrorists, they thought they were doing it just to assume political power. They never knew there was another dimension to it. That these terrorists that they all created will come back to consume them. And that is what is happening today. It is the spillover of their same, should I say, terror effects that we are feeling right across the South. That was why we said with the launch of ESN that we cannot allow that nonsense to continue. They know they, have, they are not going to make any headway in the East. They have turned their attention to the West. They are forcibly occupying their land and telling them that they cannot do anything about it. A whole presidency in a country openly and brazenly supporting terrorists. All of you watching and listening all over the world, you know that Miyeti Allah is a terrorist organization. You know that. They have killed. They have said that Benue State is theirs for the taking as a spoil of war. All of you are aware of it. You know what they are doing. Anywhere you have Fulani headsmen, terrorists for that matter. They tell you, oh, they are, they are pastoralists. They are, they are allowed to do their businesses in the forest. All of you are aware of it. But you kept quiet, hoping that somehow Tinubu will emerge as the president or an Igbo man will come as the president and your family will start enjoying but in the meantime, you have no more farmlands, you have no more forests, you have nowhere you can call your own home. The same stupidity exhibited by, by Hausa peasants that enabled Fulani to take Sokoto from them, that enabled Fulani to take Katsina from them, that enabled Fulani to take even Kanu from them. Every Hausa land is occupied either by a Fulani emir or a Fulani governor. Some of you don't want to reason, you don't ever, ever learn. That the main aim of Fulani is to conquer your land and enslave you. Look at how some people today, as I wrote yesterday, they are worse than a discarded tissue paper. They are worth nothing. Only their language is what is relevant in their lives. Everything else is lost. All of you are repeating the exact same mistakes that the house has made. That is why they are in trouble. And that is why they can never ever come out of it. They are all suffering from what I would, an advanced version of the Stockholm Syndrome. Can you imagine that these people came into their land and took it over and they cannot do anything about it? Hausa is gone. It took Fulani very many years before they came out of their shell to say we are Fulani. Remember before, many years ago, they told you we are Hausa Fulani. We are Hausa Fulani. We are, because that time, their, uh, their subjugation of the Hausa race hasn't been completed. Now they have completed it. Have they not completed it? And what is happening right now? I ask you what is happening now. Fulani have now come out to tell you we are Fulani people. Is that not what they are saying now? They are not telling you we are Fulani. No more Hausa Fulani. What does that tell you? That the Hausa race no longer exists. Do you want the same thing to happen to you? Do you want the same thing to happen to your families? To your villages? Do you want your towns, let's say Obomosho, to be renamed into a Fulani name? Do you want Tonesha to answer a Fulani name? Forget all the nonsense about unity of Nigeria. All they are uniting against is your common interest. 
Unless you prefer epileptic um, a power supply, unless you prefer to live your whole life without running water, unless you want to live in abject poverty and deprivation, your only alternative is a revolution. Let nobody discourage you. All the countries of the world doing very, very well, they all went through a revolution. You must go through it. If you don't go through it, you can never, ever survive as a people. Fulani will take you over. As simple as that. This very day, we are making it known to the whole world that the Muslim extremist dictatorship masquerading as a secular democratic government must be demolished. It must be demolished for you to survive. They have to be demolished. If you do not demolish them, your lives will end very, very miserably. I assure you. I assure you. The zoo is on its knees. Everybody knows that the zoo called Nigeria is on its knees. Who doesn't know that? Everybody knows. Nothing is functioning. You are all aware of it. When they say go and register for NIM or whatever NIM or whatever rubbish is called, all of you trooped out without legislation, without any laws. Fulani can control you however they like. Once they announce it, Yoruba newspapers very foolishly and stupidly will support them because they want Inubu as the president. And you are all dying every blessed day. You are all dying every day. Had you people risen up to say that what is happening in Nigeria is bad, there is no way that Pa Fasturanti's daughter will not be alive today. That is the price you pay for duplicity. That is the price you pay for treachery. That is the price you will continue to pay until you rise up and say enough is enough. It is up to you to do it. You did it during NSARS. You can do it again. Can you imagine Fulani people telling you, if you remove Fulanis from Yoruba forest, imagine Fulani telling you, if you remove them from your ancestral lands, there will be war, and you are panicking, and you have not asked yourself, why are they not saying something about the East? Why did they not say to Eastern Security Network? Why did they not say to me, if you don't stop evacuating Fulani terrorists from the forest, there will be war? Because they know they understand psychologically that you don't have what it takes to resist them. Do you know why Brony State is still alive? Why you still have the Kanuri people in Brony today? Was because they resisted the Fulani centuries ago. You have to go back to history to understand how Nigeria came into existence. Fulani has been expanding from day one, from Senegambia. All the way from Senegambia, they've been expanding, 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 and now they are in Okiwe. All the way from Senegambia, they are now in Okiwe. And you're asking us to somehow fold our hands and keep quiet because of 2023, because one idiot is going to come out to become a president because of that rubbish, because of that nonsensical notion we should fold our hands and wait until we are overrun by the Janjaweed from the Sahel. Is that how reasonable people think? Is that how people that wish to survive as a race, is that how they reason? It is very, very shocking that some of you do not understand what the Fulani is having in store for you. Very, very soon it is going to happen. And when it happens, your eyes will clear. And about whom you will see it very clearly. I was warning you in 2014, 2015, 2016, they said he's a warmonger. He's a, he's a warmongering. I went to America and I told World War Congress that this war you are avoiding is going to come to your villages. They said, no, it's not going to happen. What is happening today? When Yoruba was supporting this, the dead idiot called Buhari, did I not warn them that this evil you are supporting will consume you? They never listened. They never wanted to listen. IPOB is a terrorist group. You are trying to divide Nigeria. But Mietiana is not. People that you are calling bandits, have you heard anybody come out to say, please, Buhari, since presidency is there defending terrorists in the forest, why don't you proscribe them? No, you cannot proscribe a Fulani group. Never. And all of you, we are supporting evil. When there is a, the proscribed IPOB, proscribed indigenous people of Biafra, these are Yoruba journalists writing junk. Every day they keep writing rubbish. But their land is under siege. Their land is under siege. And the Fulani will take it. It will take time.
So I am here today to encourage them that they must stand tall and be very strong, resolute. That is what Fulani does. They control the media. They have well-paid consultants all over the world doing their bidding for them. They have that, uh, that uh, woman at UN trying to, to, to lobby the world that everything is okay in the zoo called Nigeria. But you and I know that the zoo is not okay. You and I know the game plan of the Fulani. And what are you doing about it? Nothing. Every day you read, you lament, you complain. Every day you read, you lament. And that's all you do. That is all you do. You read, you lament, you complain, you do nothing about it. Your lives are being taken away from you. Your forests are being occupied. Your mothers are being raped. Your daughters are being abducted. And the whole national government, presidency, is supporting such people. And you're telling me that Nigeria is viably sustainable. Is that what you're telling me? That somehow this contraption is sustainable, it is viable. It can never be. Because the more you stay in one Nigeria, the more you are inviting the Fulanese to take over your ancestral lands, take over your villages, and to make life a misery for you. That is the end game. That is the outcome. If you doubt me, go and do a bit of research. Ask yourself, who are the Hausa people? Who are the Nupe people? Who are the Bachama people? All of these people we are steamrolled by the Fulani march to the, to the Atlantic Ocean. And now they're in Yoruba land. They're in their forests. They are in their forests. And who is going to drive them away from there? If not the Yoruba youths. Forget about your, your useless governors. Your elders are very strong. I love Yoruba elders. The way they behave, the way they talk. Very, very strong. They said they support Akeredolu. Uh, 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 There's a governor of Ondo State. They support him in what he's doing. People must come out to say that enough is enough. When you travel to the north, do you live in the forest in the north? The Igbo people are in Sabangeri in Kanu. Are they living in, 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 in uh, how, of course, it's house land. Are they living in the forest? They came to the town. They work very hard. They build houses. They build mansions. They develop the entire place. Is that not what they do? What are Fulani people doing in our forest? Nobody can answer that question. They say that they're pastoralists. I want some of you who, some of you who have had your breakfast this morning, please go to your fridge or go to where you keep your, your beverages and you will see pig milk. Pig. Some of us, we are raised on pig milk. For how many years now? And uh, you keep asking yourself, what is pig milk? Pig milk is the same, the same milk that the cows produce in Holland can be produced in the zoo. Tell me the country in the world aspiring to be a member of the UN Security Council where you move cattle from place to place. Are you, people, are you people well at all? You so-called Nigerians, are you, are you normal in the brain? I'm asking you a simple question. Show me a country that aspires to be in the 21st century, moving cattle from place to place, telling me they're grazing. Which country is that? Please tell me. Some, all of you don't have any shame. When you have people, an entire presidency, coming out to defend a very primitive, archaic agricultural practice, then you know you're in very serious mess. You are in one almighty trouble, I'm telling you. You put in a mess. The Holland that you get your pig milk from, do they move cattle from, from Rotterdam to, to, to Amsterdam? I'm asking you a simple question. But they produce the pig milk that you're drinking every blessed day. Why can't Fulani produce pig milk in, in, in Sokoto? Why can't they produce carnation milk in Kanu? They have the cattle. Before the white man came, did you see any Fulani in your forest? All these people talking rubbish about uh, movement of cattle and movement of... I'm asking you, before Britain came and handed over Nigeria to Fulani, ask your grandfathers, please, or your grandmothers. Ask them. All this nonsense we are hearing today in this so-called one... I want to tell you the dangers of one Nigeria. All this nonsense you are hearing today about one Nigeria, Fulani in, in our forest, Fulani in our village, before the white man came, did you see Fulani moving their cattle all over the place? They do not have meat to eat. They will answer these questions for you. Because sometimes in Africa, we don't reason very well. The way we reason is disjointed. It is disjointed. I, don't, I can't understand for the life of me why instead of them to waste all that money arming and equipping this ginger with army Mihetiala to come and conquer you and I, why don't they open a milk factory somewhere in the north and bring the milk down south. I'm sure, I'm sure southerners will buy it. After all, pig milk comes all the way from Holland. Pig milk all the way from Holland. Now you understand it. Because of the way you people reason. 
Why can't you produce? Is it difficult to produce milk? The same milk that comes out naturally from the order of the, of the cow. Why can't you put it, can it somewhere, process, pasteurize it, and send it to people to, 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 to eat, to drink, or to do whatever with? All over the world, that is what is happening. In fact, they produce so much milk in Europe that they throw it, they pour it away. Why can't you do the same thing? A whole president claiming they are in the 21st century are supporting a very primitive practice of moving cattle from place to you all of you, you're not ashamed of yourselves. You have no shame. As somebody will say, your shame is shaming me. I'm telling you, you people from the zoo, I'm ashamed of your ignorance and stupidity. You people are hopeless, completely hopeless. One day, I want you to come and say, we're we are intellectuals. And you're moving cattle from Kafanchan to, to, to Ahoda. You, you, you are intellectuals. You are intellectualizing. You are in the 21st century, you are moving cattle, driving cattle, Nama, from over 300 miles. It's claiming you, you, Yoruba, Yoruba forest is a place for you to be in. You want to relax, Yoruba forest is your, every Nigerian is free to live anywhere. Uh, and do their business anywhere, yes? But when an Igbo man tries to sell beer in Kanu, you destroy it. You destroy their, uh, their businesses, you destroy their hotels, but you can come down to the south and live anywhere you like and grace anywhere you like. And you're telling me that is a country, that is one Nigeria for you? The Fulanese we are talking, they call them the Funa movement. Our attention has been drawn to a decree credited to one Rotimi Akredolu asking Fulani people who have occupied some forests in Nondo state to quit. We are also aware of another incident in Oyo state where an illiterate political talk gave quick notice to Fulani people to leave their territories, which are now their irreversible homes. Are you listening? Fulani are now saying that Yoruba forests is now their irreversible homes. They have now occupied Yoruba land in perpetuity. And I want to let my Yoruba friends understand this. You see, in life, anytime you support evil, evil will come back to haunt you. All of you never knew that IPOB and this Biafra movement for was for your liberation. Some of you saw maybe the oil and gas from Biafra land. If they go now, we we'll have access to oil and gas. In the process of having your eyes fixated on oil and gas, your forest is gone. Do you understand it? There is nothing more precious in life than freedom. Freedom is very important. And I need you to understand this this very morning. Every Yoruba person supporting Fulani, you are setting up yourself to become like the Hausa people. Remember when Hausa was supporting Fulani? We are Hausa Fulani. We are Hausa Fulani. Where are the Hausa people today? I ask you. Where are those Hausa people today? Do you see them anymore? Those saying we are Hausa Fulani. We are Hausa Fulani. Do you see them again today? Do you see them? I'm asking you. No. Because Fulani have completely overwhelmed them. It's called emasculation. Completely emasculated them. Look at what they're doing in the East. In the East, they come to the East, I will tell you, oh, oh you want to be the president or vice? Yeah, 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 yeah. They say, give us land for Ruga. They give them land. The soldiers of Kadu did that law, Banta. They have taken it over in forever and ever. Give us land in your state. Hope of them approve to us that you are to Give us land in Olu. Hope of them give them land in Olu. We can go and kill people in, in all people. We can kill for them. How many Fulani governors are prepared to kill bandits? I didn't say normal people. I'm talking about armed, dangerous bandits. How many Fulani governors? Go and read your newspapers. You will see it there. Fulani governors are negotiating with them, giving them arms, giving them vehicles, making sure that their life is no longer a misery. But see, they come down to the south. They tell you, give us land for Ruga. Go and kill your people to prove to us that you're one Nigerian. That was why Obioso was talking rubbish. He was uh, talking was it yesterday or two days ago. Supported by the BBC. The problem you people have in Nigeria is this. Your journalists, you see people, Punch, Newspaper, Tribune, Vanguard, and Nation, they are your second worst enemies. I'm telling you the truth. They can never, ever be objective in their reportage. Never, ever, ever. That's why all of you are suffering. But you don't know it. They were the same people used to scuttle the NSAS protest. Of course, some of you went about looking for indomin warehouses. Typical black people. 
any revolution that is coming now, you must stand very firm. They'll say, oh, you're Igbo. Oh, you're Yoruba. Oh, you are from Europe. Don't join them. It's our turn in 2023. If you do this, you will scuttle our chances of, of becoming the president in 2023. Ask yourself, all of them that have been president from, from time immortal, what benefit has it brought to you as a human being? Absolutely nothing. So you have nothing to lose. Absolutely nothing to lose. You look at them now, how they have now descended on Yoruba people, asking them to concede, give us your forest, we must graze, we must do this, we must do that. And slowly before your eyes, they are giving in, they are capitulating, they are allowing them to go, oh, uh, if you don't give it to us, Tinubu will not be president in 2023. Tinubu won't be the president. That's what I'm saying to you. And foolishly you will agree and hand over your land to them. And once they take your land over from you, look at Hausa. Because there is a saying where we come from. If you want to know what your life is going to become in the future, look at Hausa people. If you want to, if you want to, to understand, you no know, appreciate, or appreciate, I will say, the life that you are about to bequeath to your children and grandchildren, look at Hausa people. Is there any Hausa governor today? Is there any Hausa emir? Is there land though? Katsina is the Hausa land. Kanu is Hausa land. Sokoto is Hausa land. The Hausa people own it, indigenous to those areas. I'm asking you this question. Is there any Hausa man who is an emir in the north? The answer is no. There's something going to happen to you. If you don't rise up now to break, I'm not even asking people to break the zoo. Demand for what rightfully belongs to you, your freedom. The freedom to decide. The freedom to write a constitution if you prefer. The freedom to live with whoever you want to live with. That is what we are asking for. But most people misunderstood what we are saying. And today, almost everything we have said about the zoo has come to pass. Everything we have told you, everything I told you has come to pass, hasn't it? Everything. And some people are still questioning and arguing. They said, Fulani will resist by all means necessary, including armed resistance, any attempt to forcefully eject them from the forest. Yoruba, you must ask yourself this question. When we were pursuing them from a boy, why didn't they say, why didn't they say something about, uh, about ESN on Namdekan? Why? Have you asked yourself that question? Because they know we are prepared to die to defend our land. They understand that very well. That is the only language the Fulani understand. You cannot say to Fulani, oh, uh, let us have a Fulani president. And after that, all will be well. Never, ever, ever. They will continue to expand. They will continue to, they will continue to identify idiots in your midst, traitors, saboteurs in your midst. They will promise them heaven and earth. They will give them anything they ask for in order to ensure that they get into you, they subjugate you. Look at Yoruba and the Loring. Yoruba, how did you lose a Loring? You lost a Loring because somebody thought or felt that by aligning himself with what he felt was a superior full and force, he can defeat his own people. Afonja, what happened? As a result of that miscalculation, the great Yoruba race lost a Lorin to Fulani Caliphate. That is why in a Lorin you have an Emir of a Lorin, not an Oba of a Lorin, answerable to Sokoto. That is where Lai Muhammad comes from. You can see them. Sokoto slaves in Yoruba land. When I say that, it's, 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 a, it's not religion. It has nothing to do with religion. It has everything to do with the mentality of a conquered people. Now they have left the Lauren, having taken a Lauren and taken it to Zogoto. They now want to come into Oyo. They want to come into Ondo. Once they take over all those places, it's over for the Yorubaris. Over for you. No, ne, never again will anybody rise a man of honor or integrity in Yoruba land. Never ever. It will only be their stooge. Look at what's happening in the East. Only Fulani stooges can now imagine the East. It, they, it took them very many years, nearly 50 years, to accomplish this very simple task of making sure that everybody, be it Ohaneze, be it Pandev, be it governor, anybody you're bringing out must come to the north to swear allegiance to the caliphate. All of them, by none. Is there any political godfather in the east? There is none. They all go to the north to go and swear allegiance to the Janjaweed. 
That is why our life is in a mess. That is why they can do something like Obiozo and make him the um, the Ohanese uh, president general in front of our eyes. Oh, in front of Koro Koro. And what did they, they bribe? They gave money to BBC. They gave money to to all zoo newspapers. They started to trumpet Obiozo, oh, Apex Group, Apex, Apex, Apex. You saw them holding their meeting under under a canopy, a ton without shame. A whole under sand, turn canopy, canopy. Maybe you saw it disgraceful and shameful. Talking rubbish. The man looks like a ginger weed anyway. Talking nonsense. These are people they have prepared for you to sell you down the drain. By the time the Fulanese are done with you, believe you me, if you don't rise up now to fight for your freedom, by the time Fulanese are done with you, you'll be more useless than a house peasant doing a Babi Allah somewhere in Zaria. That is the future that awaits you. Now, our people must understand this very clearly, especially my Yoruba brothers and sisters. It is about time you stop supporting evil. That evil is in Asorok. That evil is a, a gang, a gang of, of reprobates calling themselves presidency. The more you, so you keep on supporting evil in the zoo, the more your land will be taken from you. The more your daughters will be raped and abducted, the more your sons will be slaughtered in cold blood. And on that one, Nigeria, there is nothing you can do about it. Absolutely nothing. Because one idiot that they groomed will rise up and say to you, Oh no, it's one Nigeria. There is crime everywhere. Uh, haven't you heard about Zamfara? Haven't you heard about um, Katsina? There is crime everywhere. That is not the case. The crimes you have in the north, the insecurity you have in the north is as a direct consequence of their own action. They groomed them. Al-Qaeda in the Maghreb. Uh, ISIS in West Africa. Boko Haram. Fulani headsmen, bandits, all of them. Who brought them to Nigeria? It's Fulani. Fulani brought them into Nigeria. Erufai brought them in. Bauchi State Governor brought them in. Are you people deaf and dumb and stupid? When you come out and you pretend, oh, we are one, one Nigeria, go and show me. Somebody was asking, where is the boundary? Uh, where will the boundary of uh, Biafra begin? And I asked the fool, where, where, where did the boundary of Nigeria begin? People from Niger come in and go as they like. Most of these idiots are from Niger. They are building a pipeline to Niger. They are building a railway line to Niger. They are building roads to Niger. Whereas where the money comes from, which is Biafra land, we don't have those infrastructure. No, we don't. But you're taking our money. You come to Izombe. You come to Ohaji. You come to Ewema. You come to, to, to Aguleri. You come to uh, Eboi. You take our resources, sell it, get the money, and now you're building the way to Niger Republic. And you want me to be happy with you. Clap for you. Oh, Nigeria is doing well. One Nigeria. I think you, 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 maybe not again. you are insane. You come to my land, you take our oil, you take our gas, you take our manpower, you take everything, our VAT, our tax that we pay. You are now building a road from Katsina to Niger. Airport in Niger. Refinery in Niger. You take oil, crude oil from my land, you take it to Niger, you refine it, you bring it back to me as a refined petroleum. Or as PPS as you call it. And you're telling me that that country is viable. You're telling me that Nigeria should be supported. We are in one Nigeria. We are not going anywhere. And you're dying every day. Because those that they appointed to speak for you, they gave them money and positions. So that they will come out on the pages of newspapers to give the world the misleading impression that everything is okay when things are not okay. Go through the statements of Ohaneze and see the contradictions in it. Nigeria is not working. We are marginalized. And then you come back and say, Nigeria is one. We must stay in it together. Are you not foolish? These are the useless intellectuals that you have. On one hand, you say Nigeria is not working. You are marginalized. You are being discriminated against. You are suffering. They are killing you everywhere. And you come back to the same place and say, Nigeria must be one. Had Nigerians gotten together to say they want to be part of this useless contraption, that's entirely their business. Our main Democrats have subscribed to it. But have you asked yourself this question? Why is it that all those asking you to remain in one Nigeria has something to gain from Nigeria? Or they have benefited in the past? Nothing more, nothing less. I saw the letter that Atika Baka wrote to, to President Biden. 
Inita Tuka Baka said to come, come and help us fight terrorism in order to ensure that there will be no regional destabilization. That is their game plan at the U.S. State Department for very many years until we stepped in. They keep trotting out these lies. Once Nigeria breaks up, there will be destabilization in the entire region. I said it because you don't understand African history. Most of these people are not educated. When I say it, they say I'm insulting them. No, I'm not insulting you. Most of you are not educated. In Africa, we are tribal creatures in Africa. In Africa, we are tribal creatures in Africa. We always go back to our village where we are born. Where our umbilical cord, our long, where it was buried. That's where we come from. That is why every Christmas, Easter, um, New Year festival, uh, August meeting, you see us migrating back to where we come from. And I keep saying these things to Africans, they don't understand it. They don't understand it. Everywhere in Africa during Christmas, if you like being in South Africa, if you like, let it be in Kenya, you let it be in Rwanda, everybody from the capital goes to the village. If you go to Accra, the same thing happens. This past Christmas, if you like, go to Kotonou. Go to Yaoundé in Cameroon. Everybody living in the capital cities of Africa, they go back to their villages. They go back to their tribes where they come from. Do they do that in the, in the Western world? During Christmas, you see people migrating from, oh, I come from Florida, I'm going to Florida. No, you don't. Because people come from where they are born. We come from where our ancestors were born. That is the difference between black people in Africa and those from Europe and other parts of the world. We come from, so if you ask somebody, where do you come from? He or she will mention their village. That is what makes us Africans. Very, very unique. If you destroy that, you're finished as a people. In Africa, we are tribal. First and foremost, we belong to our tribe where we come from. That is why our people need to appreciate this very very critical that africa is restructured to recognize where people come from all these artificial creations by europeans nigeria this and that all that rubbish that is why you can never ever make any progress for the next six billion years you can never ever make any progress in the zoo why is it, if we are not tribal, why would the whole presidency come out, Fulani presidency come out and say, we are defending Fulani headsmen? A presidency of the whole of Nigeria, so to speak. It is because by instinct, we are tribal beings in Africa. That is why Nigeria is unsustainable. That is why the man from Ishekiri has to vote to say, this is where I want to belong to. That is why referendum is the only way forward. That is why Africa is poor. Africans must recognize that this is who we are. You cannot live in Lagos if you are an Igbo man during Christmas and start traveling to Zoko. It's impossible. You must go to Igbo land. You must. That's where you come from. And if they ask you, oh, but you were born in Lagos, you will say, no, that's where my parents come from. They ask your parents, your parents will say, that's where my parents come from. They will keep going back until they get... Uh, uh, to the perhaps the, the hundredth generation. That is who we are. And nobody can change it. We are not born on the streets. Some people were born uh, uh, along um, uh, Ijora or Kota Highway in Lagos. Maybe they are from Urobo. You ask them, where are you from? They say, I'm from Urobo. But I was born in, but this is where I come from. That is who we are. That is why all these useless, idiotic countries created in Africa cannot survive. It can never ever survive. And how do we stop it? Only a revolution can stop it. Only a revolution. If you like, keep postponing it. If you like, keep putting it off forever and ever. Only a revolution can solve this very problem because under a revolution, the powers that be, those that be making your life a misery, will be overthrown. Nobody will say it's a coup anymore. It is called popular uprising. Don't let anybody deceive you. Don't let anybody deceive you. And that is why today some soldiers are listening and they are resigning from the army. How can you be a soldier in the Nigerian army? And your village is being occupied by full army headsmen. Imagine those from, uh, uh, those from Oyo or Ondo serving in the Nigerian army. These are Yoruba, my Yoruba brothers who are serving in the Nigerian army. You are from Yoruba, you are serving in the Nigerian army, doing one Nigeria. But your village is being occupied by a Fulani 
The same people you are serving or you claim you are serving, your village, your village is under occupation by them. And to make matters worse, those you are serving under their flag, one Nigeria and the Arabic inscription, or should I say the motto of uh, Ottoman Danfodio, to tell you how foolish Nigerians are. You don't know that the Nigerian emblem, the army emblem of Nigeria, is the motto of Ottoman Danfodio that he used to conquer Hausa people. You don't know that it is there. That's what they're using. You are fighting under the banner of your conquerors. Maybe in Sambisa Forest. And now they are sending their advanced strike force into your village. And you're doing one Nigeria. I'm a Nigerian soldier. I'm a Nigerian army. That is why I commend the 127 soldiers that have resigned so far from the army. If you don't do these things I'm asking you to do, you will. Uh, when the time comes, as I'm telling them now, remember 2015, remember 2014, remember 2013, I told you all these things. I told you what was going to happen. And now they have all happened before your eyes. You've seen it. I'm warning you now. If you're serving in the Nigerian army and you think you're loyal to Buratai, you think I'm serving my, my Nigeria is not a, a fatherland or motherland to anybody. Nigeria is not a motherland or fatherland to anybody. Nigeria is purely a British creation. A British creation. Because if Nigeria was to be a nation or country, there is no way those that call themselves the presidency Asoro can come out to support illegality in understate because they know they are doing it for that why do you think they want to avenge and revenge for salma Dubelo? why they knew that Salma Dubelo and and his um his um his people so to speak we are fighting for them they understood that at the time the house of people thought that the family was fighting for them but today it's very clear hi are you are you um, i asked you a simple question when i began are you hearing house of Fulani anymore no, it's only Fulani, 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 ever, because they have taken over the entire corner. Of. That is one thing you need to understand. People must begin to appreciate this. If you are in the Nigerian army and you're serving the Nigerian army, you are only paving the way for the conquest of your village, the rape of your daughters and the abduction of your mothers. I'm telling you this. You are in the Nigerian army, yes. But what the Fulanis have got in store for you is to overwhelm and to conquer you. I feel sorry for those of you who are so foolish that they cannot reason very well. There are people who are, what I call, I won't use too much grammar because a lot of people are watching, mothers are watching, grandmothers are watching in the villages. People who out of cowardice and self-hate think that Nigeria somehow can be won. But all of you know that Nigeria is an Islamic country. I'm sure you're aware of that. All of you also understand the intentions of the Fulani. Oh, if you want the presidency, you have to work for it. Tinubu, you must work for it. How is Tinubu working for it? You must condemn anybody who comes out to speak against our people in your forest. That is what they are doing. Some of you don't understand it, but we do. Some of you do not understand what is happening, but we do. And that is why we are here to tell you. The real terrorists in Asorok, they have dropped them. Now, presidency is telling you, you cannot touch them. But these are people killing people in Yoruba forest. No, you cannot touch them. A whole presidency to tell you that every Fulani man is in on this. Their foot soldiers are Mieti Allah. Have you all forgotten that they gave Mieti Allah a hundred billion? Have you all forgotten? No, typical Nigeria, nigger. Have you all forgotten? So you've forgotten that, uh, that this so-called presidency, Garabashe, who gave me yet 100 billion to come down to the south to give peanuts to, to useless monarchs and traditional rulers so that our forest can be taken. Have you all forgotten? Oh, you have. Of course, you're in the zoo. You've forgotten. Did they give 100 billion to any other organization? Did Asorok give 100 billion to any other group? Why would a government give 100 billion to a bunch of terrorists and openly claim that they are stakeholders in the government? That is why government can come out openly without shame to support terrorists in Yoruba forest. Let them come to our land and they will see. I, I know the game they are playing. There was this um, stupid video that was uh, that is in circulation. You know that they can't attack ESN. They can't. They have no moral ground. But I'm sure they gave money to some idiots and gave them guns to say they are Biafran army. I don't know if they're up to six or seven of them, which is a lie. It's the DSS creation. 
so they can have justification to say to to biden or the u.s ambassador can you see they now have their front army we can now move in to attack them anybody educate if you are involved in that video take up our welcome you want to give full honey janja with the reason to invade our land that's what you're doing but we shall get to that later anybody involved in the circulation of that video is a gunner i'm telling you the truth and those that made it that's how people behave because because they are they don't understand the game plan of the full enemy. people are very foolish full enemy will come to you and want to use you and you succumb because you have greed envy and jealousy inside you which one again is Biafran army i'm asking you from where how many people the day i will bring out the Biafran army we number over two hundred thousand standing reserve is over a million some bunch of idiots somewhere because you're serving your full and ginger with masters. We'll get hold of all of you. Check out Uno Oko. We know they're bad eggs when we see them. It, we want people against voting for Buhari in 2015 when he was still alive. The same Buhari died in 2017. People, all of you know that Buhari is dead. Today he's young, tomorrow he's old. You see his hand is fresh today, tomorrow. Nobody knows who is who anymore. All of you are there, but because it's the turn of your village. Your brother is a senator. Your sister is a House of Reps member. You don't want to lose that money that is coming in every day. You come out on social media and you're talking rubbish all the time. Because you're a black person, you don't understand. There is something called economies of scale. Some of you cannot reason very well. You claim you went to school. Sometimes I wonder the type of lecturers you had in your useless schools that you went to. I wonder, honestly speaking. Because you and your family, you are benefiting. Somehow you think that life is okay for you. Because of the, 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 the level, or should I say, the poverty of ideas inside you. Any day your relative goes into the farm, the flannies will kill them. All you can do is to lament. Say things are bad, though, and you go and you sleep. And nothing gets done about it. It was the... I am very, very grateful to Almighty Elohim. That the courage today that you have in your land is because of ESM. The courage of Amoteku to say no to Fulani is because of ESM. Because of Eastern Security Network, that is why they found the courage to say no to Fulani. If not, they will not do it. After all, all these years, without the coming, or should I say all these months, without the coming of ESM, has Amoteku said we are going to flush out Fulani headsmen from our bushes? Never. It's because they saw us, they have seen us doing it. They said, oh, we might as well do the same thing as well. In order to, 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 it's called the pinsa movement, to cut us off. They got some people, I don't know whether, maybe in Olu or whatever, got them together, gave them, they say, we are Biafran army, a few idiots. They are shooting guns, we are Biafran army. Inside somewhere. Did we tell you that we have formed the Biafran army? We said when we form it, the world will know that we have come. I don't hide anything. If you claim you are behind any useless group calling themselves different army, show your face because I'm showing my face on video. I claim ownership of ESM, not ownership of course. I can claim responsibility for ESM. Can you claim the same thing for Biafran army? If you claim you're a human being. That's to show you it's all the handiwork of DSS. Mad people have every idiots everywhere. Africans and lack of discipline. You don't have discipline. You don't have discipline. That was why the white man came and conquered you because you lack discipline. After the white man must have finished um, um, with you, Fulani came from Senegambia because you have no brain. Lack of discipline. Every idiot thinks they can lead. They don't know what leadership entails. Every monkey thinks, oh, maybe if we have it. Then Nobody is funding IPOB ESN. It's only IPOB that's funding it worldwide. If you think you can bring two or three people together with a, with a few rifles, and because of that, you can start calling for funds, you are wasting your time. You don't know our people. They won't give you a dime. Fulani is making use of your brain. You cannot see it. They come to you. Oh, why don't you fight Yoruba? Oh, Yoruba is against Igbo. Igbo is against Yoruba. Fight each other. The same thing they did in, 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 the, in the constitution of, of, of Biafra land. They told uh, 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 Ogoniman, you're not Igbo. He said, okay, I'm not. Ija, you're not Igbo. Oh, I'm not. Oh, you play, you're not Igbo. Some of them, of course, most of them are, are Igbo. They agree. Oh, I'm not. And I want to ask Ogoni people something today. 
Some of you don't understand the meaning of what is called divide and rule. You know, you read it, oh, divide and rule, they divided us. They... You don't want to put your brain behind it to understand what it means. You have no idea. When they ganged up with um, Sarawiba to say Igbo man is our problem, today all that oil spill in Ogoni land, have they cleaned it up? I'm asking a question. Have they cleaned the oil in your land? Igbo man is your problem, yes? Have they cleaned the oil spill in your land? You are begging them to clean the mess that they made. How many of you own oil wells from Ogoni land? Igbo man is your problem. They want to come, they want to use Biafra to deceive us, to take our land, to, 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 to dominate us. All of you crying about Niger Delta marginalization. All these years that um, you have nothing to do with an Igbo man, have you survived? Have you survived? I'm asking you. Have you survived? Now, let me tell them something today they don't know. The free world, they have a defense, um, should I say, organization called NATO. Who are the leaders of NATO? The North Atlantic Treaty Organization that every civilized nation belongs to. Who are the leaders of NATO? It is the United States of America. Somebody must lead. It cannot be everybody. One person or a group of... They must lead. They must lead because they have what it takes. God gave it, made it so in the East that we are all related anyway as one people. Tied as, that's why you have Igbo, indigenous Igbo people in Bayesa, indigenous Igbos in Rivers, indigenous in Delta, majority, majority Igbo people. Everywhere, all the way to Igodomigodo, in Edo State, Ed, uh, in, in Edo Land. God made it so for a reason. The first revolution in Nigeria was led by an Igbo man, Nzogo. That is the way God made us. I can't apologize for it. Because if we leave you to do it, you cannot do it. In a billion years, in one you cannot do it. You cannot do it. Because you don't have what it takes to confront the ginger weed. We do, you don't. With all due respect. Is your land clean? Do they have clean water? Do they have good schools? The same thing for Ejo. Ejo, do you have good roads and um, good schools? Good health care? No. They will put somebody in office for four years or eight years. He will build one community center and say the dividends of democracy. As okay, he passed, whereas he's planning to get his children to, to, to Australia. Every day you wake up to the same rubbish. Every day you wake up. In, every day you wake up to the same garbage. Day after day after day after day. And what is your response? The same thing over and over and over again. You go back now and they say, oh, hey, I'm from uh, Ishekiri. We are not part of what they're doing. And you accept. And look at your life and how miserable it is. You lament. You lament. You lament. But you don't have what it takes. To make the much needed change. They say that all the government, the government of Ondo State and others must draw a boundary. We are, who are the bandits and who are the law abiding? How can we know? I said, I'm going to my phone, my phone, I'm going to my phone, all the lizards, all the, you know, they are lizard, their stomach is, on, is almost on the floor. So we don't know which one has belly ache. How do we know? How can you differentiate between a good headsman and a violent terrorist headsman? How can you know? How can you know? I'm asking you. Mietiala is there remote controlling all your lives. Look at how they installed, after installing Hope, who's the man, they installed the idiot Hope, Hope, or what is George Obioso. George Obioso was the man that took Hope, who's the man to the north to go and introduce him as a politician. The same uh, also them, uh, that uh, George Obioso, he's an, he's, he's an intellectual, as, as they, you know, you fools. Once they give you a degree, they say you're an intellectual. George Obioso, before you took Hope also them uh, to the north, did you know that Hope also them uh, was doing 419 in Lagos? He was a fraudster, you're doing Yahoo Yahoo in Lagos. Who doesn't know in Imo State that Hope also them uh, was a fraudster in Lagos? These are the type of leaders that they, 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 they imposed on our people. Idiots. And uh, we are there. They have apex organization. Apex organization. Apex, apex, apex. These are errand boys for the caliphate. That's why BBC is promoting him. 
That is why they are all promoting. That is what they all they have always done. Black people are like that. As I told you before, when the British came to stop the the the, the eastern advance of the French um, um, colonial forces in Benin Republic, in Badagri, basically in Badagri, you know what Britain did? They didn't go to, to England to come and bring soldiers. They went to Ghana. They recruited Ghanaians, black niggers from Ghana, to come and help them to conquer their fellow niggers in, in Nigeria. They didn't have to go travel very far. That is why I keep saying that the brain of a black man is his greatest impediment. You see, inside this brain, everything a black man is suffering from is here. Inability to reason. Inability to reason. It is the truth that I must tell you. Some may not like it, but of course I will tell you. You cannot, the presidency is telling, you cannot unilaterally push out headsmen. What are they doing in the bushes? In the forest? And they said it's to feed their cattle. Before the white man came, where were you feeding your cattle? Fulan, where? What was your cattle eating then? They said it's climate change. Of course it's a lie. You came from very barren, arid Sahel. No rain in Sahel for centuries. It didn't start today. You were able to keep your cattle. You drink the blood and you drink the milk. That's how you survive. Now, what are you doing in Ondo Forest? Our people cannot see because they are blind. People cannot see because they are blind. But we are here to open your eyes. We are here to open your eyes. The time now is exactly four minutes past nine. Sorry, it's, we are four minutes what am I? No, I think that's 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 that is UK time. It is four minutes past ten. I'm looking at the UK clock. It's four minutes past ten a.m. in the blessed land of Biafra, where we are under the bondage of the zoo because a few idiots want to be president of Nigeria. <laughs> because after that, then what happens? All of them killing themselves over Jonathan presidency from the so-called Niger Delta or Yoruba that was dying because of um, Obasanjo presidency. Where are they today? They are still the ones crying that things are not okay. So you think as an, as an Igbo man, if you're there for eight years, somehow, miraculously, you change anything? You don't see it right and they killed him. Use your brain. It was meant to be Alex Ekweme after Shagari. Buhari overthrew the government. 1983. Some of you don't know history. Rather than allow an Igbo man to become the president, they did a coup. Some of you need to reason very well. Hope you also, you claim you, you went to school, you should be able to use your brain. Oh, can you believe the people who are foolish? They cannot, because of the inchonche, well, chicken change they give you in Abuja. Please have a house in Abuja because of that. We are going to suffer and die. Even you've, you've not seen anything yet. You have not seen anything yet. At this point in time, let us take some questions. We then will continue. If you want to send us a question, please, I'm not going to take a direct call. I will call my secretary, and then she will be able to tell us precisely who is who, who are the ones asking the questions, and what they're... Go to Twitter and ask your question on Twitter. When they ask your question on Twitter, then I will be able to answer it live on air here. You can ask anything you like, and I will answer it. Um, can you hear me? Uchenna, can you hear me? Yes. 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 Go ahead. We are listening. Uh, do we have any uh, any questions from people uh, that will require yes. my response? Yes. First, good morning and good morning, everyone. Thank you all for joining us for this Q&A session. And I'm going to start with question one. Let's see. Okay. So question one is, good morning, sir. It appears that Odua is getting pretty hot at the moment and onward you, your english is too american for us so you know we are from the village uh, this english is too american um please break it down raise your voice for me please raise your voice and um, break it down for us if you can please because this grammar is, is too americanized you know, this um akata is uh, somehow for us that grew up in the village please go ahead sorry okay it appears that Oduduwa is getting pretty hot at the moment and onward. Is IPOB ready to offer moral and logical support to them? Yes, and we have been, yes, we have been doing so. We have been doing so and we shall continue to do so. We want them, I want the Oduduwa to come out of their shell, to recognize that Nigeria is a mess 
a recognition that Nigeria is a hopeless, is a hopeless case and come to fight for it. Not all the time the Fulani will give them something as they promised uh, 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 if uh, Obafemi Awolo will make you the president after this and, uh, and all that and they buy into it. it. It will never ever happen. It will, what we are saying to them is that they must come out and support what we are doing and that thing is a referendum. Everybody must demand a referendum that gives you a say in how you are governed, in how your children are going to be governed in time to come. And the only thing that can bring that about is the revolution. We start with the revolution, they will now, they will, they, of course, they will be forced to capitulate. And then after that, we have a referendum. There must be a referendum. So we are willing and prepared to offer them every support that they may want, of course, anytime, any day. Next question, please. Nigeria Army resigning. Some of them will send to ESN, acknowledging that they've resigned, but they but this is a lie planned by zoo government by zoo government. My question is how are we supposed to receive the resigning soldiers in ESN? Because this is a plan of Nigerian government trying to send spies to ESN camps. Um, we, uh, we, 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 we have a very special recruitment and induction procedure that will root out every fake soldier or every unpatriotic soldier trying to join ESN. It's not going to happen. We have filters in place, and when the time comes, we will root out the bad eggs within them. But I must encourage them to continue resigning because what you have is not an army of the nation. What you have is an army of conquest by the Janjaweed rulers of the zoo. And we must do everything we can to demolish and dismantle it. And please, can you give me the names of the people who are sending on all these messages, please? We need to know their names. We want to know their names, please. It's very, very important that we know who is asking all these questions, please, if you may. Okay, let me... Do we have any other question? We do. Um, so this is from Bucci Law. How can we inform ESN when we notice unusual moves in our beloved Biafra lands? We are everywhere. IPOB family is in every village, in every nook and cranny of Biafra land. You don't even need to bring it to our attention. We will know already, even before you. Once we come across them, then we do the needful. You may not hear about it but they will not disturb you anymore. We are working tirelessly night and day to make sure that our farmlands and our forests are rid of all these terrorists from the Sahel, and we are not going to rest until we have accomplished the complete eradication of terrorists from our villages and our forests as well. So you shouldn't worry at all, we know about them. Okay. Kenneth Kina Du said, Oyendu, good morning. My humble question is this, why do we have to congratulate Joe Biden when we know how shady his election is and how it portrays us as people seeking for favor from people, Democrats, who I, I think he wanted to say who has hatred for us even before we knew what they are? Um, he has been sworn in as the U.S. president. We have no choice than to acknowledge and recognize him. As I said before, as it is the case with the zoo, if you bring out a goat and say, this goat is our president, the world will have no alternative than to accord that very creature, every privilege, every right, every respect due. Americans have sworn in Joe Biden, and he is the president of the USA, and that is the end of it. We have to be, we all need to be politically mature in a way are we now saying that we have the right to intervene in U.S. electoral process? No, we don't. The same way that when Biafra comes, we will not expect anyone to dabble in or interfere in ours. Of course, we are going to conduct very free and fair elections, and we shall ensure that that is the norm. But when people produce their president, you don't have any right. Was I'm, I am not an American citizen, so I have no right to challenge the decision of the American people. It is entirely left up to them to decide. So for now, Joe Biden is the president of America, and we have no other choice than to go with it. That's how life is, unfortunately. Okay, so the next question is from Marcus Graham. When we get Biafra for our American and Canadian Eastern brothers and sisters, how do we get them to fully invest when many aren't aware? 
Invest in what exactly? I'm not. Um, he didn't really state it, let me go to the next question. Yeah, they will need to know what the investment is all about because Biafra Land is going to be run. We must acknowledge the importance of inward investment. I am an economist, so I understand all these things anyway. There's something called inward investment. And uh, we'll try and do what sensible people do. Instead of having pig milk in Holland, bringing in pig milk to us, we we'll allow them to have a farm, a dairy farm in Biafra land, where the cows will be milked, and that very milk pasteurized and processed and canned and distributed. Do you understand what I'm saying? So we know how to make Biafra land viable economically. They shouldn't worry about that. We know what we're doing. Okay. Um, this question is from Victor. How can we undo Ohaneze to help us get Biafra as regards to one of the points to be earned according to UN condition? Um, Ohaneze Ndibo, you mean? Mm -hmm. It's not just Ohaneze, there's also another useless group called Pandef. The thing is that um, Ohaneze can do whatever they like. How many people can they command? Have they issued any command before and anyone obeyed them? How have they done? See, people must ask themselves, what has Ohaneze done from inception till now? What have they done? I can tell you what Igbo State Union did, National High School, Aba, and all the rest of the scholarships that they gave to people. G name one thing that Ohaneze has ever done before. One. And I'll support them. The answer, sadly, is nothing. They have done absolutely nothing, and they do not deserve the support of our people because they are useless. They are absolutely useless. All that is there is like a, 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 a Janja weed uh, club for Sabo, Sabo, Janja weed Sabo club. That's what they do. All they do is they, uh, they sit down there and say, give us a name or somebody who can be minister, and that's, that's all they do. Tell me one of his achievement. Now what they came and said, oh, I'll eradicate every um, police checkpoint and we'll do this and I'll do that. How did he do it? Did he want to do it? Instead, checkpoints uh, explode exponentially. They never accomplished anything. Not one thing he said he was going to do did he accomplish in four years. That's how they want to be president of Nigeria. Ndara. Please go ahead. The next question, please. The Afro Technology said, Sir, why can't we just declare Biafra independent and start living on our own? If they bring war to us for that, then we fight it. And again, take the war to them because how I'm seeing things in Nigeria, Nigeria is not ready to let Biafra go. We better take it now by fight. <clears throat> is the reason why you must do things in a particular way is because we are Republicans by nature. There are some things you will do, and people will say, who did you consult? Who did you tell? There is a saying where we come from, which means no matter how small this animal is, it deserves a place um, um, at where decisions are being taken. No matter how small or how big we are, everybody, um, regardless of how idiotic the person's opinion may be, they are entitled to be heard. We are the original Democrats before any other race in the world. We are original Republicans, so you must be seen to carry the majority along, and that's exactly what we are doing. When the time comes, Biafra will quite rightly be declared, and our territories will be defended. That's what we are going to do at the right time. The consultation is ongoing. Everything humanly possible is being done to ensure that we do what is right. But right now, at this very precise minute, the time hasn't come, and we just can't declare Biafra now. The time is not right. King Don, my question is, why the so-called Sabos fail to understand that IPOB is fighting to free our people from the slavery we are into? Thank you. Because, because we are all black people, and black people do not reason very well. I've said that before. And I have also alluded to the example of white people using black people to conquer black people. That is the way we are. The, so there will always be saboteurs. But this year is the year of the great hunt. And we are hunting for them. And some of them are beginning to feel the heat as well. I'll give you another example. Look at today, for instance. We woke up this morning to a very shambolic, useless video being circulated. Of, of you know very horribly dressed human beings claiming they are Biafran army 
just somewhere saying that they're from Nami. That is how black people reason because uh, there, there's something wrong with us. But thankfully for IPOB, we are now able to get a majority of our people together reasoning, um, or should I say properly, and pursuing one very unique outcome, which is our freedom. So there will always be support to us, but we are all going to defeat all of them, one after the other. Okay. Only Kachi said, why are some influential Igbo leaders and business people not supporting IPOB? Some are even campaigning for Igbo presidency. And what is IPOB doing about that? People are free to do whatever they like because they are not coming out openly to support Biafra because of their business interest, because they are selfish, because they do not understand what patriotism is, because also they were groomed by Fulani Janjaweed to do exactly what they are doing. That's the reason why they are the way they are. Our people, let me tell you something. Most people, everybody who was a multimillionaire after the war was a saboteur during the war. That's what they do. Everybody who was a multimillionaire immediately after the war was a saboteur during the war. The, it has benefited most of our people over the years, and they are continuing in that very vein, which is very, very sad indeed. Very, very sad indeed. That is why we need a revolution. And in a revolution, you cleanse all these idiots. Well, um, of course, I'm not going to say what will happen to them. There will be no more. That I can assure you. Okay. Indu BC said, without reviewing plans, is there ongoing lobbying on Joe Biden administration on behalf of freedom? If so, is it already in motion? And second, the... <clears throat> The governor set up another security outfit. How do we intend to counter them? First of all, the governors cannot and have never set up any counter security outfit in the East. That's number one. They cannot do it. They don't have the manpower because my message to our people is very simple. Do not join them. As simple as that. Again, I, I'm not at liberty to divulge precisely what we are doing in respect of our ongoing consultation on Capitol Hill. That will continue. Some of you may know that we have retained the services of a very top consultancy firm on Capitol Hill, and that work is ongoing. I am not at liberty to divulge more than that. But what I can say to you is that after very many years of trying, the U.S. State Department have now come to realize that the Fulani intention in Nigeria is to overwhelm and conquer everybody. It is not about pastoralists and farmers having a clash, no. The Fulanis came to conquer, to pillage, to occupy, and to decimate, and we are not going to allow them to do that. And I'm very, very glad that the U.S. State Department, after many years of lobbying and at a very huge expense, have come now round to adopt our position on that very matter. And if yeah, stay where you are and compass, if you have any questions to ask, please make sure that you send it via Twitter. Send it via Twitter. I think it is on my wall, if I'm not mistaken, or you go to my Twitter uh, uh, page or handle or whatever they call it, and you give us your question, and I will ask you Chen, later on to try and read out some of those questions, the very pertinent ones. But today we are live, we are direct, we're letting the whole world understand this, and Nigerians in particular. The Nigerian youth that did us so, uh, you made us proud when you came out for end South protest, but you're going to come out one more time. The Nigerian youths, prepare yourselves. You are going to come out again to try and defend your right to exist in the land of your ancestors. People talk about tanker explosion. I want to ask you this question. You know, a lot of people don't understand what the Janja with the flan is having store for us. Every time we hear about a tanker explosion somewhere, why don't these tankers explode in the north? Why are they not exploding in the north? I ask. Why is it that all this gas explosion, these cylinders exploding and killing people doesn't happen in the north? That is to tell you that they know what they are doing. It's part of the coordinated attack to deplete the populations of the south, to make us become very fearful, and to make us easy prey for the taking by Janjawi terrorists from the Sahel. Even those who supported the coming of this Janjaweed government, this terror organization. Now it is clear to my Yoruba friends that uh, what you have in Asorok is a terrorist organization. 
masquerading as president because there's, there's no Buhari. Everyone knows that very well. There's no Buhari. What you have is a terror organization masquerading as presidency. Now coming out to defend what is in effect indefensible. And it is very, very sad that we have the likes of Wike in River State. Pensioners are being owed money. Pensioners are being owed. There are no pensions, no money to pay pensioners. But he found 500 million to send to Sokoto. I told you about him and Tambuwal. He wants to run under PDP as vice president to Tambuwal. Weak. Eh? That was why he came and he emptied all people. Sent people to jail in the north. And some of them were killed. And he's a so-called political leader. That is what we are facing. That is what we are being forced to endure. And that must come to an end. Some of you don't know what we're encountering on a daily basis. It cost us a lot of money to bring out our people once they are arrested or detained illegally. We are fighting and we are spending a whole, you know, load of money, to be honest with you, to try and get them out. And the judges in the East are not helping. Igbo judges are not helping. None of them are helping because they, like, for instance, in Imo State, judges are not being paid. So when they arrest IPOB family members, a judge expects to get his pay from there which is very, very sad indeed. And that is why our people are being detained and they're asking us to pay them money, which is very, very sad. These are people that have done nothing wrong. They've not broken any rules, not broken any laws, but they are being arrested at the moment and our judges are not helping matters. And we don't want to be against them. We don't want to go against all these judges. No judge in the North is jailing proper terrorists like Mieti Allah. They are not in jail. Nobody's convicting them, but our own judges, I don't know what's wrong with our people. Our own judges will be there uh, delaying and, and uh, making life difficult for people who are actually fighting for their own freedom. And I must warn them that they are aiding the march of the Janjawi terrorists into our territories. They are using us to make money. Our people must understand this. They are using us to make money. They are not paying the judges. Most of them uh, have not been paid for about six, seven months. So when you arrest an IPOB family member, that becomes a way for you and the police to make some money. And we are saying that that is blatantly wrong and we can no longer accept nor support it. The reason why the, the march towards freedom is, has been delayed is because most of you think that the governors must be involved. The, the stupid Janjaweed groups like Ohaneze must be involved. That's the mistake you're making. We outnumber them. The same way we outnumber Nigerian army by almost 100,000 to 1. If we want to make a change in our lives, we can make that very change. If we want, we can change it. If there is uprising in the east, in the west, in the middle belt, do you think that Nigerian army and police can have the numbers to quell it? Of course not. So that is why they will use the newspapers to tell you it's about ethnicity, it's about religion, to get into your mind. Once we come out, there's going to be a revolution. Once we come out again, everybody must hold their territory. Nigeria hasn't got the army to go around. Never. They don't have it. Their army is about 150,000 men. Pinos compared to what they are going to confront. We must rise up and say that enough is enough. But there must be no criminality. Once you allow criminality to come in, then you have failed woefully. We have failed woefully. And let, let me also warn once again, there is no Biafran army. DSS can go and create whatever group they like. Give them guns, all, all of that rubbish, in order to justify an attack against ESN. But we are letting the whole world know that we have not floated any Biafran army. There is none. Anything you see is the handiwork of DSS. If, they, if anybody has the courage to float an army, then they should come out, as I did with ESN, to say so. I claim responsibility for the formation of ESN. Anybody that created or that claims that he or she created Biafran army must come out and also do so. Because I know it's DSS. They can never, ever do it. They can never, ever do it. I don't know where they shot the clip. I have no idea where they shot it. I have no idea. But I can assure you that we are looking for them and we are going to find them because they want to provide a legitimate cover or excuse for the Janjaweed army to invade the territories of Biafran. That's not going to happen.
That's what could happen. And on that note, we have come to the end of our broadcast this very day. And I do not know if we have any more questions to take. If people have actually decided to send in more questions, if they have done so, I want very difficult questions, please. I want difficult questions, please. But as I say so, please be minded. Note that there is nothing called Biafran Army. All we have is Eastern Security Network. We don't operate on the streets of our major towns. We are in the bushes hunting terrorists. And uh, they are feeling the heat, I can assure you. That is the only thing I want my Yoruba brethren to do. Do the something that we are doing in the East, and we are all going to be free. And as we are doing it, our march towards freedom is going to come via a revolution. Spontaneous, across the board, middle belt, the entire South. Everybody is going to rise up to say enough is enough. If you don't do it, you will live in perpetual bondage. Uh, Uchenna, can you hear me? I can. Yeah, do we have any more questions? Yes, we do. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay. Jessica, um, Jesse stated, good morning, sir. My question this morning is, since you said that you won't be the president or prime minister of Biafra when it comes, yes. is there any plans to get a Biafra government or are you going to be the interim president? until we get an elected government no i will not be the biafran people will choose who will lead them they will decide it is, it is not for me to impose anybody on them biafran people will decide who is going to lead them because we are democrats we are republicans and um, we believe in what the entire public says not a few individuals very very important to understand that Thank you very, very much. And on that very note, we have come to the end of this very broadcast this very day. In the coming weeks and days, there may be need or reason for us to come back on air to keep you updated. But for now, please bear this in mind. Anybody telling you about Biafran Army is working for the zoo, is working for DSS. Anybody telling you there is need for an army to march at this point in time, they are looking for an excuse to try to make our life difficult. They want the Janjaweed army in the bushes to remain, sorry, the terrorists in the bushes to remain, and we're not going to tolerate it. Thank you very much, all of you, for watching and for listening right across our platforms. From me, from here, it is still good morning. <laughs>